young birder who discovered um, his passion for photo photography um, early on and, and how well to combine those passions. Um, that's when he was arriving here in 2011. Um, he was awarded top prize for his Northern Pygmy Owl that was taken at Maplewood Flats. Um, and that was awarded through the 2018 International, or uh, sorry, the, and, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry yeah, um, the International the Orthologica Con Congress, yeah. Um, he's involved in many different groups. Uh, I can let him speak to some of those, um, but um, we've really appreciated and benefited from his expertise, his care um, and um, approach to photography and bringing that to a group like this. So, um, and Nicole, who is our uh, new, one of our newest staff, she's our digital communications coordinator among many other things. So I'm gonna let you speak now. Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Preisel. Um, I am Stalo uh, from Lacamal First Nation, um, as well as having heritage in Squamish from Homolchton um, and KT. Um, I'm also a mixed settler Canadian heritage, and I always like to um, acknowledge um, that when I um, introduce myself, that I come from many places, um, but I'm really um, happy to be coming to you guys from um, part of my traditional territory, which is Vancouver. Uh, we are located on the traditional, the ancestral, and the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, um, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh. Uh, Wild Bird Trust um, is situated on Tsleil-Waututh territory. And as a part of some of our mandates, we are um, continuing um, redress and reconciliation uh, movements towards uh, repairing damage done over the past um, 100 years um, or 150 years. So yeah, uh, thank you so much, Leanne. And thank you so much, Pierre, for being here, um, I raise my hands to you. Um, and I thank you so much for your time and your insight. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be um, putting up a screenshot of everyone's um, uh, uh, photos that they've submitted and we'll kind of just be going through them. Pierre, you kind of mentioned that we're just gonna make this a nice laid back kind of atmosphere, um, just a time to enjoy the beautiful photography that um, has been submitted. And, and Pierre has so much knowledge and um, wisdom to kind of share with us. I'm really excited to be hearing that. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, Pierre, thank you. And I will be sharing my screen. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Nicole. I really appreciate that. Uh, and Leanne, of course, as well. Um, so yes, I do want to acknowledge that uh, I am living on the um, unceded territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and uh, Musqueam here in uh, Vancouver. Um, and um, so, yeah, I wanna keep this pretty laid back. Uh, I have a, a bit of a more formal presentation that I've done before actually for, uh, for, uh, for Maplewood Flats. And as Leanne said, I was one of the first, if not the first person to, to brave the, the new Zoom world we are now living in. Um, but um, I'll keep this a little more uh, informal, I think, um, and uh, do this in two ways. So of course, many of you, uh, since you've submitted the photos yourselves are expert photographers already. Um, so I mean, I might be speak, uh, preaching to the choir, so to speak, um, but some of you may not be, uh, some of you may be spectators. So uh, either way, um, I think that, you know, there's a number of things, I think, when you're submitting things to either a context or an exhibition, and I would say especially an exhibition, um, keep in mind what the, the promoters are actually trying to get out of these photos, right? So it's an interesting thing. When you're doing a contest, it's a little more general, and, and often then the more general um, rules, I hate to use the word rules, they're not rules, they're suggestions of photography apply a bit more. When, uh, when it's an exhibition like this for Maplewood Flats, often creativity is going to be rewarded above technical expertise, even though the technical expertise is 
like super important, right? Um, and so uh, needless to say, like Nicole and, and Leanne, you can contradict me if you want, but you know, typically speaking in these cases, you, you're looking for other things. And so, um, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll start with a very quick overview of the general stuff that I like to look at when I'm taking photos, but then maybe go on to the more specific stuff. Um, and so what I think we'll do is maybe sort of do a, a quick run through of the photos yeah. uh, first. Um, and then, so as I do my general talk, we'll see the photos, but then I'll try to mention the photos again. So try to remember the photos. Uh, the way it's gonna work here is just take a look at each photo um, and it'll come back. Uh, so don't worry if you don't yeah, see they're in a loop. <laughs> time, right? They're gonna loop, so there you go. So one of the first things I like to keep, to say to people about these things is keep your eyes on the prize. And what do I mean by this? Well. Um, when you're looking at living subjects, uh, and by living subjects, I mean uh, animals of some sort, not plants, um, keep an eye on the eye. Uh, there's no other way of putting it. Um, it's always good to be able to see the eye, um, and it's always good for the eye to be focused, uh, if possible. Now, you know, this is not, a, again, a hard rule. Um, there will be exceptions. Sometimes you'll have some really neat photos of the back of the head of an animal, for instance, uh, and that could be very cool. Um, but um, typically you want your subject to be looking at you or the eye to be visible and, you know, looking at the old middle distance there if you're a movie buff. Um, so, you know, I do recommend that, that you try to have eyes visible in your photos. And then one of the things you want to look for in your photo, of course, is that the eye is in focus. But the other thing is you want to make sure that your eye has glint. By that, I mean just that little glint uh, in the eye that is uh, usually uh, often the sun or it can be a spotlight. Uh, but for, for, of course, for a natural subject, I don't recommend that you use flash. Uh, if you can use natural light, that's preferable. And so here, for instance, with this squirrel, you can see there's glint in the eye of the squirrel, right? Uh, so there's an example there of the kind of thing that you're looking for when you're taking uh, a photo of an animal. Um, for instance, with fish or insect, that's a little more challenging to do that. Um, although I did once get a hooded merganser catching a fish and there was a glint in the eye of the merganser and the fish. And so I was very proud of myself. <laughs> now that's a bit of luck, I will admit, but um, uh, it is possible to do it. And you know, the trick there is to keep the sun behind you. If you do that, the chances, and to make sure the sun is fairly low as well, right? So if the sun's not too high and if it's behind you, typically you'll be able to have some kind of glint in the eye of the animal, right? And so you see, you have the glint there at the top of the eye of both um, otters in this case. Um, and typically you'll see also in photos now, if you take a look at your digital photo, um, if you look really closely at the eye, you'll notice there is a glint. So it's not always obvious, like the owl here, it's evident that there's glint. Um, and other times it won't be as obvious. There, there was the osprey there, but I'm pretty sure that if you were to zoom in on the eye of the osprey on your computer, you would notice that there's glint in there. Um, now in the case of osprey and other animals like that, it's not as uh, essential. Part of the reason is that when there's yellow in the eye, like there is in this owl, for instance, um, it's not as important to have the glint. When the eye is dark, uh, as such as the otters, for instance, it is good to have glint. It sort of adds life to your subject, essentially. Um, and so you'll notice that if you look at these photos, they pretty much all have that uh, as a circumstance. Um, so, and then the other thing that's good is to try to keep eye level with the, with the subject. That's difficult sometimes. Uh, you, you don't want to spook your, 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 your subject or you don't want to intimidate them or scare them away, of course. Um, but whenever possible, if you can be at eye level with the animal or seem to be at eye level, that's a good idea. Like the chickadee here, you can see that you're pretty much at eye level with the chickadee. Um, and with the coyote, I know where that photo was taken, so it's not quite eye level. Uh, but because of the way distance works when you're using a camera, it looked like the coyote was eye level with the photographer. So, so 
they're ways of either faking it, so to speak, or having it done so that it is eye level. So the TOEI before, that was eye level. Um, and you could see that very well. Now, um, the other thing to make sure that you need to look at is the foreground and the background of your photo, right? The, what's in front, what's in behind your subject. So um, that's important, of course, in any kind of photography, um, whether it's landscape or, or portraits of some sort. Uh, but for portrait, it's essential. Uh, the last thing you want is an object in front of your subject that blocks it in some way that detracts to the photo. And you want to avoid as much as possible a background where something that really sticks out and doesn't enhance the photo will contribute to having a problem. So here in this photo of the bee and the flowers, for instance, you have um, a really a nice effect of bokeh, which is to say the background is out of focus and the foreground is sharply in focus, right? And so in this case, this photo, you, this allows you to focus on the flowers and the bee and not so much the background. The background adds like a nice color to it. It provides some kind of context in this case. You can see there are other plants behind it, uh, but it doesn't detract from it. There's nothing there that really screams out, you know, pay attention to me, which shouldn't be uh, there. Um, so this is important. Now, one of the things uh, I mentioned earlier, and I'm, I'm talking about this particular photo of the tanager, I think is a really interesting case in point here. Um, there was a major fallout of Western tanagers at, um, uh, at Maplewood Flat at one point uh, in the, uh, the fall, I think. Um, and um, this photo, of course, is symbolic of this. This, this is saying like this, is actually unusual to get such a good, clear shot of a tanager so close up. Um, and in this case, because the, the photographer was there at the right time, they were able to capture something that really marked the season for, for the flats, right? And um, so this kind of photo will have a special interest when you're organizing a photo exhibition or like say a calendar, for instance, of the flats, because you will want people to see, hey, this happened, this kind of bird came to the flats. And it's, you know, I think that you see these birds pretty much every year at the flats, but maybe not in those quantities and not in this impressive plumage. And so given the plumage, I'm gonna guess here, this was in the spring um, and not the fall, as I had said. So um, when you have this kind of situation and you're submitting something to an exhibition, that kind of photo may attract the judges in particular because they're like, oh yeah, that's right. There was this fallout uh, in the spring and it's an interesting uh, recording. It's a, it's, a, it's a memorial, if you will, of that event happening. Another thing they look for, and this is, I, I think I saw this in the coyote photos and a couple of the eagle photos in particular, um, this clearly was taken in the flats, right? It was taken on the flats or it was taken close to the flats or it, it represents something that's pretty unique to, um, to Maplewood. Um, and so this was taken on the flats. Um, the eagles, uh, two of them, um, and I'll get back to this photo soon. Uh, oh no. Pierre? I'm not sure if it's just on my end. Yeah, is anyone he's frozen, else? but he's still on the, the pillars. On the, there oh, you are. There he yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. So this is the eagle here. Um, and my internet collection apparently is unstable, so I apologize. Um, and um, so the the this eagle photo here, and then the other eagle photo where you see the the pillars, uh, whatever those are called, on the flats. Um, the yeah. With the uh, with the purple Martin house, um, so those are really cool photos. Like for for somebody doing an exhibition, this one here, uh, the, for somebody doing an exhibition at the flats and really wanting to showcase the flats, this will attract their attention. They will like this kind of photo, and they'll be like, "Yep, this is very representative. It's a representative species in a re representative place." So when you're taking these photos, right, and this is all part of the foreground background, right? It, it matters what you have in there. Um, and this kind of photo may not 
like appeal in certain circumstances, but it has great appeal in the case of an exhibition like this or say the calendar. Um, and so again, uh, not to prejudge what's gonna go into the calendar, I'm not selecting anything for that, but when they are asking for calendar photos, that will matter, that will matter to people. Um, and so this, this is important. And another thing is that looking at this beautiful wood duck, um, of course, color is something that matters. And here I'm thinking of that beautiful photo of the, of the plant. Uh, I wish I knew the species. I am not a plant guy uh, at all. Uh, anyway, it's so Oregon so, grape thank or you. Mahonia. Yeah, so Oregon grape, uh, they, they have the red um, leaves and the, and the blue fruit. The colors are just fantastic on that photo. Same thing here with this, with this wood duck. Of course, wood ducks are are just gorgeous birds, um, but the color palette here is really well represented. Um, so any photo like that is also going to the tanager, obviously the yellow and that, that unique red there, red orange, um, it, it really does stick out. This also has a lovely color and I love the way the light makes the wing look translucent, right? So these are all the little details when you're taking the photo, when you're thinking of the photo, you need to take that. Of course, you know, bears here, for instance, we have a bear. It's an iconic species uh, in British Columbia, but also on the flats. Um, there was a long time when the bears would not have been able to be on the flats because the flats were so polluted um, and it would have been impossible for them to be there. In fact, many of the species you see today were not on the flats 40 years ago, 50 years ago, because they were in such a bad state. Um, and so thanks to a, a collaboration between many volunteers um, uh, and the Slaywatooth, correct, uh, are there. So uh, with the collaboration there, I think really helped to make the flats what they are today. And we can only hope that in the future they will get even better. Um, and I know there's a lot of work still to do, um, but I think that, you know, it's, it's a testament that we are seeing so many different species. Uh, there. But again, when, when, so going back to the photo aspect, of course, when you're being asked for photos, think about these things. Are there iconic species or are there species, for instance, that are uh, miraculous recovery? I mean, the bald eagle, of course, is the best example of that uh, species that was on the verge, on the, on the verge of being extinct in all of North America 40, 50 years ago is now actually has a, a large and healthy population. Um, and they've come back on the flats as well as everywhere else. Um, so uh, I will get back to some of the other photos because I want to make sure that I hit on every photo. This lovely photo of the spider here is, is I know spiders is not for everyone, but uh, are not for everyone, but it's a really beautiful photo. <laughs> again, the bouquet is really nice. Um, and uh, again, the, you know, you don't have the focus on the eyes, but in this case, in the case of insects, that is not nearly as important. Um, what matters here is more to see the body shape and the color of the body and the, uh, the, the, the pattern, the color patterns of the body. And they're very nicely represented in this photo here. Um, uh, one thing I would say, like a lot of these photos, when you look at it, the exposure is really quite good. An example of this is actually this one. Um, as you can see, there's a high key. So high key feature here is that the sky in the background is completely blown out. And that could be fatal in some photos, but in this photo, it was absolutely necessary because you needed your bird to be in, in correct um, exposure. Um, and it's actually even more challenging in this case because you see the fanned out tail here. You wanna get that, in, that effect of it being translucent. Uh, because of the way the light was, it looks like to me that the light was not, you know, like if the photographer had used the standard way of, um, of light metering, this would have been ruined in one way or another, right? Either the, the, the bird would have been completely overexposed or completely underexposed. But in this case, the exposure of the bird is quite perfect uh, and it allows for this translucent effect in the tail and yes, there's a, a, a high key impact on the back here, but because of the tree, it kind of softens that. And it gives you a better perspective than you would have had otherwise. And I love this photo, by the way. Uh, it's just a gorgeous photo of these otters. They look attentive, but not afraid. Um, and they are taken on, a, on the rock. So you see them very well. You see those lovely feet they have. 
So again, the, the, the attention of the photographer here to the details was very important in the success of this photo. And again, exposure was correct because the otter is not underexposed, which could have been the case. And of course, this is beautiful. This is a fantastic owl. Uh, I mean, one of my many favorite birds. I have too many favorite birds to list actually. Uh, but the really beautiful, again, the bird does not look spooked. So the way to see if an owl is spooked is when they have the very big round eyes. Uh, so here you can see the, the eyes are not quite almond shaped, but pretty close to almond shaped, uh, which means that the, you know, the photographer was discreet enough that the owl did not freak out. Um, and you have a really nice photo here of this owl. Um, and the sawwet owls are not necessarily uh, commonly seen because they're very nocturnal. They're very hard to get, um, but they are pretty common, quote unquote, in Maplewood uh, Flats, even though most people don't see them. Uh, but it's a really beautiful photo. Um, so I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to. Uh, this, again, this photo is fantastic. I love the colors here and the exposure and everything about this photo. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. A really nice photo. Um, I think that I would hand it over again to, to the hosts. Um, and I think that they probably wanted the photographers to talk a bit about yeah. this. Yeah, we have a few of the photographers in the house, shall we say. Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop the, uh, oh, actually I can keep this up. Um, I would just like to ask, I guess first, um, are there any photographers that would love to go, like are kind of raring at it and, and would like to go? Um, uh, and if you do, just either put your hand up or unmute yourself, just because there are a few pages, so I can't see everyone. Um, but yeah, let us know. I can't, uh, I think I see, saw Janine, right? Jean, mm -hmm. Janine, Jan, Les, Perfect. Um, Andrew Brown. Um, Laurel, Les, um, uh, Raisa. Raisa, perfect. Yep. So who wants to go? Is anyone comfortable speaking? Even just to share, you know, what was the occasion that you captured what you captured? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can speak about uh, my picture some, if that's. Perfect, yeah, I'll go, go ahead yours. and break the ice here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get yours, one second. All right, just make sure I'm not, there you go, perfect. Yeah, so um, I took this back in October. Um, it was my second time or third time visiting the flats. Um, yeah, I was just, I was there with my partner and her mother and we were walking and we're, I'm not, a, uh, I'm, I wish I had the whole loop down greater in my head, but it was on <laughs> the far side of it. Um, we were crossing one of the bridges and just look over to our left and I was like, oh yeah, that's a bear. So <laughs> um, yeah, I had a nice long lens on my camera too. We weren't, you know, very close to it. Didn't want to get too intrusive on him. So got the, snapped a few pictures real quick and then kept it moving and everything. But yeah, that that's was amazing. That was my experience with it, yeah. I love how it looks like you're just having this like little like staring contest with each other. It's, it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. Again, I didn't want to keep that up for too long, but he did. He looked right up and yeah, caught the lens perfectly. And I was like, all right, got what I need. Wow. <laughs> and he even has a, he's tagged too, which it seems so. Yeah, 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 I did. I did notice that. Yeah, I, I was, I don't know exactly who does that or anything, but I, I was like, yeah, somebody knows about him. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. Yeah, of course. No problem. Who would anyone else like to go? Yeah, I, I can go. Perfect. Is that you, Janine? Yep. Awesome. Okay, let me go um, to your photos. Give me one second. Okay. Perfect. Do you want to start with this one? Sure. Um, I actually started to take learn, uh, learn how to take pictures at Maplewood. That's where I started, Christmas Eve of 2015. Um, my husband gave me his old camera. So I spent a lot of time down there and, and um, the Osprey have always kind of fascinated me. And I was just walking, I was just coming in uh, right by the slough there or the, I guess, before you get to the bridge and um, they were nest building. So they were flying in and breaking off branches. 
so it was just right time mm. right place and uh yeah it was it was kind of exciting to watch that's amazing the green of the leaves is so beautiful mm -hmm. i love yeah. that it's just just perfect <laughs> yeah no it's amazing and then you have this one too yeah yeah i um i i like to basically not I, I usually use long lens i don't want them to to know i'm there so it was just fun there was actually two families of otters so there were two moms and and uh one mom had uh two pups and the other had three so they were all playing around on the shore and catching fish and then these two just happened to climb onto the rocks and um i just sat there and watched them they were just so much fun to watch wow oh. yeah I these think are river otters right yes yeah perfect yeah Thank you. Wow. Yeah, That's, we yeah did, there's. Sorry, Leanne. <laughs> we did see a few images of the families, but they weren't submitted. So, <laughs> but this was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was really beautiful. Yeah, I saw them day after day. They were so much fun. Um, and this one was was just pure luck. Um, we'd been down there walking around with a friend, and um, we were just heading to turning around to go, and our friend came running up behind us and said there was a bobcat right behind you and you totally missed it. And so I was all really upset. And then anyway, so I thought, okay, well, maybe next time. <laughs> so um, we continued walking and we, we heard crows and they were just going crazy. And that's one of the things I usually, like I use my ears a lot. Um, I listen for things like the crows or the robins or the or jays um, because I really like the birds of prey and they usually let you know they're there. So in a tiny little evergreen, um, just, when you get past the woodlot, um, it was just a tiny little evergreen and these, the whole group of crows were just bombing it. So we just kind of had a little look and just peering out of the tree was this little owl and um, totally didn't even, you know, acknowledge we, you know, my husband and I were there. Um, we both have long lenses, so we, we keep our distance and didn't want to disturb them. But I think the crows were giving him a little bit of a um, little bit of a afternoon waking him up from his nap there but uh, he was it was really exciting to see him so it made up for missing the bobcat <laughs> oh that's so good I, he's just so cute like, i know that maybe some birders wouldn't refer to an owl as cute but to me when i see this photo i'm like i just can't get enough it's like uh, just so adorable it's so teeny i'm sure it's larger <laughs> in real life but so they're pretty yeah. tiny i guess about the size of a your, your you know your fist or maybe a little bit bigger than your fist wow but yeah they're really cute they're they're one of my favorites oh that's amazing that's really cool thank you so much i'm not sure if you had another one or not but um oops um but yeah, yeah. but no thank you so much i really appreciate that janine and yeah any other photographers that um, would like to go i can't see everyone because i have quite a small screen so just um, unmute yourself if you'd like to. Oh, Raisa, sure. perfect, mm -hmm. awesome. Hello, everybody. <laughs> These are amazing photographs, by the way. I have to, I have to say, <laughs> and I'm, I feel very fortunate to be part of this. Um, so my photographs are a little bit different. I, 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 I'm not. I didn't have a camera with me when, uh, when this happened. So I've been. I usually I have my phone with me, and I bought some some lenses that I attach onto my phone. So I've been playing around with that a little bit. And um, this one, it just so happened that the bee was coming, just dive bombing, photo bombing my, <laughs> my arrow shot. Uh, <laughs> and it was that perfect timing that I caught it. Of course, my phone memory is completely filled up with arrow shots um, <laughs> and the one shot of the bee coming in. <laughs> so. It was it was just that perfect timing, and uh, I love the two little eyes on the the bee. Yeah, it's it, it, it. I kept zooming into that to to take a look at it. Almost uh, it's alien like, you know, that it <laughs> loses a bit of the form of the bee and has this caricature type of face. So, I I actually like that in the in the photo. And then the other one of the moth was during the outbreak that we had. Mm -hmm. um, I was driving up to the flats and. My car was covered in moths, so <clears throat> I brought my my camera pretty close to the moth there, and it caught the reflection of the sky mm -hmm. on the glass, and it it, it really illuminated the shot um, uh, with those colors. So I was I was pretty happy. It was a happy coincidence that it grabbed that instead of what I was seeing on the glass. 
<laughs> yeah, it almost looks the... it almost looks like you have glint on, on the eye of the insect, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. And all the little hairs too. Right. So you're mentioning using your camera phone. What type of a camera phone do you use? I'm using the Pixel 3. And I found that it's the best camera uh, on a phone that I've ever, ever used before. So it's the Google Pixel 3. And, wh and what do you like about it? What are the features? Is it um, macro or, or, yeah, or yeah. zooming or what's the qualities that you like about the camera? Uh, so the camera itself has really good resolution um, and, and my night photography, the night, night photos are, are amazing. So I, I do a lot of kayaking and I'm in the harbor and I usually go at nighttime. And I don't want to carry an expensive camera on my boat because I'm usually getting wet. So I have my uh, my my phone with me, and it takes great night shots of the city. Um, so that's one of the the features I really like. And then I have some external lenses, so a macro lens that connects onto my phone, um, which I am usually on hands and knees taking photos of every bug that I can see. <laughs> here, oh, wow. here. Pierre, is it sacrilegious that th this conversation talking about uh, <laughs> our, our camera phone photography? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, I have to say, I was going to say, uh, but the, the cameras have an uncanny ability to expose photos well. Uh, it is really surprising. I mean, they did they did wonders with the uh, with the algorithms. Um, and, you know, so like a friend of, uh, of mine and I, so I use DSLR, right? So um, uh, basically re reflex, right? So there's a mirror and the mirror yeah. comes down to expose the, uh, my friend actually, he, he was an early proponent of the, um, uh, what you might call it, mirrorless cameras. And so in a sense, like, you know, phones are kind of a form of mirrorless camera. Uh, but one of the things that my friend was saying was that exposure the automatic exposure of, of mirrorless cameras were really amazing. Um, so the, you know, they don't give you necessarily always the same freedom that a DSLR will, but the DSLR is unforgiving. If you screw it up, you screw it up completely. I mean, the photo is a wreck. Uh, with, with phone cameras, especially cameras on phones, it's actually hard to get a bad shot. Um, like the, 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 you can get a very unoriginal shot for sure. But yeah. if you, if you're doing like this photo here, this is fantastic. I mean, you know, I just love this, how it's, it's like most of it's out of focus, except for the parts that matter most, right? The, the mm -hmm. eye, the eye and the little sort of almost feather like things there on the wing and whatever that is on its nose, if that's its nose or mouth or whatever that is. So yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not an insect person. So I'm, I probably insulted all the entomologists here, but <laughs> all that to say that, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all because I think that, you know, with a phone, I mean, it's very easy to get sort of shots that are kind of okay, but getting great shots is difficult. Um, it's yeah. just, just as hard, right? I, 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 I have these debates a little bit with, with a photographer friend, uh, Jay Saloum, who's, you know, he's won a won a Governor General Award winner nationally. Yeah. And 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 I think I, I'm only on safe ground if I say to him, because I use a, a Huawei P30. Uh -huh. I, if, only if I say to him I'm using fully manual, because I can actually <laughs> use full, I can use fully. I mean, it's still dig, it's still digital photography, but I can actually set the Huawei to be yes. purely manual, mm -hmm. and then then I can have a conversation with him. But, <laughs> no, but I he, no. He knows so. Huawei has. That he knows why he has deeply sophisticated algorithms that, you know, will mask up any errors that I, I could make make manually. Yeah, I still think that if you're not if you're not a if you don't have a good eye, you're still going to make boring photos with your camera. So, yeah. like a boring photo is a boring photo. A great photo is a great photo, and most great photos are not accidents. Yeah. It happens. I even wrote it down here actually that sometimes <laughs> accidents do happen, uh, but you can't count on it. So no, I think I think using phones is great, and I think these photos are a proof of this. Yeah, that's what um, Leron 
I think his last name is Gerstman, remember in the end? Yeah. When he was talking about what he uses, because mm-hmm. a lot of people during his um, artist talk, they're kind of like, oh, how do we get into it? Because it, it can be very expensive to buy DSLRs and even just any kind of camera equipment. And he was like, honestly, a lot of times I'm also using my phone. I'm, he's probably using his camera more often, but you know, he said it's a great tool if you want to get started and and start, like you were saying, Pierre, the having that eye for it right and practicing yep. and really honing your skills before you go out and maybe spend all this money on a camera so yep. yeah no it's really good and uh Risa Absolutely. submitted s- several moth photos and it was hard to choose which one because yeah. they were all so fascinating in their own way so yep. yeah thank you so much Risa, for your yep. thank you beautiful yeah and shots. Then that's another example of something that was very you know an, an event a, a, an interesting kind of thing that happened this year um generally in the region so it you know Mm -hmm. yeah it's a great a great example of like you know the the moths were i guess good for i I think erwin and you and i were having this conversation the other day the moths were really good for the birds because you know provides food and sustenance but then also kind of had this negative negative effect on the trees right so it's kind of this like little, I don't know, I said double-edged sword. I'm not sure if that's the right <laughs> use of that phrase, but yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Um, any other photographers? I'm just going to just uh, again, unmute yourself if you'd like to go just so I can hear you. Yeah, it's Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi. How hey. are you? Fine, thanks. I'm going to go. Give me one sec. I'm just going to find your photo. How's your day going? <laughs> Great. Yay, there it is. Oh, we love this one. Yeah, that was about 6.15 in the morning. So the sun oh. had just come up. So the light is lovely. I usually go to Maplewood early. And the is, I'm just an amateur, uh, <laughs> but I'm very observant. So, <laughs> you know, I, and but you're dealing with wild things and they don't always just, you know, turn their face to the sun or you know, <laughs> could you just sit here and move your head no so you, you get what you get exactly yeah no I love it and like you when you when we printed the photo off and we put it up um in the nature house just having it like that just staring right it's like I know Pierre said yeah maybe this isn't exactly eye level but really and truly you do feel like the coyote's eyes are really matching yours and I think that that's so cool it was way off, like the tide was way out and it was way out in the distance and I saw it coming in. So I took several photos as it was coming in, but I'm an old lady. I don't lie on the ground in the mud to take, <laughs> and I don't have a long lens. I've got a 200 zoom. So what I get is what I get. Exactly. And this is amazing. And that's a, an amazing example, I think, of what we've been talking about, right? Like um, you don't always have to have the, the best amazing equipment, but you can produce amazing photos like this, you know? Yeah, I just oh, like thanks. wild creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and 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 this is a beautiful, beautiful specimen. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. animal. It was there this morning digging in the marsh. I think pretty oh, sure it's oh. the same one. <laughs> so cute. They're great you'll scavengers. See, you'll see it on my Instagram. Ooh, <laughs> I'm gonna go take a take a look. I've been following it, a lot of you guys great, on Instagram. Picture. It's not a great picture because it's far away, but it was digging and rooting and snapping and yanking. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love it. Healthy. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thank you so much, Jen. I really appreciate it. And oh, but another thing we want to mention is like, I think Pierre already said this is like, you know, seeing that you're actually at the flats, right? Like photos like this are great because when we saw this, we're like, wow, this is a great example of like, you're not just going to see a coyote maybe in the bush you can also see it out on the flats which is really cool so yeah yeah oh thank you so much i really appreciate that um all right who would like to go next i think i see les yeah hi um my my foot photography equipment isn't very sophisticated it's no i don't have long lenses this is my camcorder here no worries. I'm just going to find yours. I think it's near the end. Give me one second. Yeah, the eagle on the dolphins. Yes, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so my equipment isn't that sophisticated, but I think uh, Rob Liss kind of summed it up uh, 
fairly well when he said, if you visit the flats frequently, you're more, more likely to catch something, catch that photo, catch that uh, opportunity and, and see that thing that's rare or, or just, just get it at the right moment. I think that's uh, what, I, what I seem to do. I just have to either be there at the right moment or, or have it close enough that it's, uh, I can get a good, good shot of it. I, I love this. And is this Capitol Hill or Burnaby Mountain in the background? It's Bur Barnett Beach in the background. Yes. Yeah. It's Barnett Beach where the, the grass Burnaby Mountain, are. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's so stunning. Behind. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, when you when you know your subject and you know your terrain, I mean, yeah, you can take some really amazing photos. Um, yeah. and yeah, certainly the eagle photos there, the coyote photo, all of this re requires that you know you know the place and you know the, the subject, but yeah. it, it's a nice illustration of that. Yeah, yeah and John Lohman, he, he was one to sort of, you know, come on site every day. So, you know, you can see the benefits of just really knowing and spending time and echoing what Les said, Rob shared with you. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Les. I really, I love uh, all the photos of eagles. It was hard. We got a bunch, actually. It was hard to choose like our top uh, favorites because, you know, they're such beautiful creatures. And and for myself, at least, um, and my, you know, indigenous ancestry, like eagles mean so much. And, you know, when I see them, I see our ancestors, right? And so, um, or, or creator bringing messages. And I think that that's really uh, beautiful. It was, it's really nice to see these gorgeous shots of eagles in their kind of natural habitats and he's staring right at us in this photo. So I love it. So yeah, thank you so much, Les. I really appreciate it. And then Laurel is there. I think at that time we didn't realize what your first name was, Laurel, but the photo. Um, yes. Give me one second. If you're comfortable saying anything about the. Sure. I, I don't have a ton to say. I am a pretty new photographer and um, my camera is not super fancy. This one was taken in the fall when all of the orb weavers are out on the um, side of the park closest to the road. So when you're sort of, when you're doing the loop, it feels like you're, you've reached the halfway point and you're coming back around. And oh, yeah. uh, where it's very open there, um, there were just, you know, dozens and dozens of these. And one of the things that I like really like about the orb weavers is the, like the females are the really large ones that you see. And then if you look around, the males are little tiny ones that are mm -hmm. often sort of up in the corner nearby. <laughs> I didn't um, know that. Yeah, yeah. so, so that mean? one. And then the, the photo of the Junko was near the, um, near the um, wild plant nursery. Um, but what I love is that the, um, the snow accumulation on top, of, on top of the bird. And so um, there was also snow accumulation on top of me um, oh. as I was trying to get these shots. Um, so that is- I all. love it. I love and I, and I love how it's like totally, you know, it's doing the insulative, just like totally fluffed up and, <laughs> and you can see like the must feathers in the front there. Yeah, when we saw it, we were like, oh my goodness, like at least for myself, I mean, um, I've, you know, I'm a little bit, like I was raised um, to appreciate birds and my dad loves them, but was never like so um, knowledgeable of birds. And so when I saw this, I immediately um, asked uh, my dad kind of what was going on. And yeah, he was saying like, sometimes they do that just to keep warm, you know? So um, I think that's really cool. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I didn't know if you had another photo or not. I think it was these two, right? Just those two. And the thing that I like is that they're both like, they're about as bread and butter, low key, like everybody gets to see these if they go to the flats. Yeah, no, that's so true. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. And they also kind of show two different seasons, right? Like more fall, and then you have this like really vibrant wintry looking scene. So I love it. Thank you. All right. I'm not sure if anyone else would like to go. There, there's um, a couple of questions. I just responded to Ashwin right, right in the chat about where to send 
photos. At this time, we're not selecting photos. We've completed this year's exhibit selection. Mm -hmm. Give my email just in case. And somebody on the Facebook, similarly, uh, the A.E. Miles Clarks asks, as a new follow of, of Maplewood Flat Facebook page, can you tell me how often you request photos to be submitted? I would be interested in contributing. Thank you. So um, uh, I'll answer for that. Um, so this is what we call the members photo show too. I, um, the photos all have to be on site um, and we prefer that you are also a member. So it's easy to become a member. We can help you with that. Um, you can do it online. You can email me. I can facilitate payment, um, um, individual memberships. Uh, we have a, a student and low income uh, um, $15 for one year, then the $30 for an individual, uh, $50 for two years, that kind of thing. And then, um, like I mentioned about the exhibit, it's once a year and we usually invite um, selections starting in September to be able to have an exhibit near the end of the year that coincides with our AGM and then keeps brings us through the winter months. So has something for us to come into the nature house safely distanced. Um, and we also um, have our calendar, which is all Coast Salish wild birds. And from there, we may select um, five to eight or more of the images for the calendar, as well as reaching out to some of the folks that we, we make connections elsewhere. So. Could I, could I add to that, Leanne? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I think, I think to, to his question also, though, um, there is lots of space and opportunity for our members to share their images through our channels. So we do, you know, just fr fr frankly, in terms of the numbers, it's more likely that a, that a member would um, have their image reposted or reshared than it would be to end up in a, in a calendar or the exhibition. And there's lots of space for that. Rob Alexander, and um, Nicole and Brayla, myself, uh, Leanne, we all share administrative roles in the Facebook and the Instagram. And so there's definitely a, a process where we internally are um, identifying and, and, and sourcing images that people have tagged into, tagged into Maple Wood Flat. So we do encourage that. And then I think in a, in, a, in, a, in a way where we try to be egalitarian and accessible and participatory, like we don't, um, we try not to be elitists around, um, you know, this is, you know, we're only taking award-winning photography or we're only reposting images that um, are of exceptional quality and standards. I think too, I really appreciate what Pierre was talking about in terms of the context. Uh, we, re we really appreciate when, when our members show images of more anecdotal experiences of the site um, or, um, you know, you know what I'm saying. So not necessarily the, the award-winning photograph, but the but the experience of being on the flats, or um, that the beautiful photo of the coyote in the morning when that morning light is just hitting the 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 fur, and you know, so that that different times of the day. And so we're always ex excited to show and repost and share those types of images. So for sure, like tag your images in there. And it's unfortunately not a, a revenue generator for folks. You know, we don't have the capacity to pay people. But I think we, our leadership group at Maplewood Flats, we, we, you know, our politics tends to be more of the egalitarian type. So that's the way, the way, the way we lean. And so that's the way we curate. And that's the way we want to show, show our members that we're accessible and we want to um, show off. And, and equally, we have a call for proposals right now out. And uh, if you get the wingspan in the mail in about 10 days, you'll see there's a full page call for proposals. So, hey, if a few photographers want to, get together and say, hey, we want to do a, a photo exhibition of morning at the flats, you know? And, and then there's like a series of photography and, and you know, we want to um, guest host on the Facebook. We're going to do a, a month long series called Morning on the Flats. And it's going to run through the month of April and the eight photographers are going to come together or two photographers are going to be there every morning. And we're going to shoot at sunrise at the flats. We would love a proposal like that. Right, so so it's please be inventive and creative with your own. You know, don't just use what our what don't don't just use the systems that we're telling you about. Feel free to create as members 
we value, uh, and I know Laurel, you're on the call here and you know, Laurel, you've got lots of work that's very similar to our, our work in terms of trying to understand our role as settlers and, and investigating our relationship to land. That's potentially another a, a theme or a, a way of seeing Maplewood Flats through those lenses. And so maybe maybe a call for proposals from artists and photographers would be like, we're gonna explore this perspective about Maplewood Flats and we're gonna put it together as a book project or a photo exhibition or a Facebook series. So just, just throwing out some, some brainstorms there. No, yeah, I think that's so really- Just oh. one thing to add about that is the audio element. I think it was Janine mentioned about she listens for the birds first. And I know Rob Lisk has mentioned that. And I think really thinking about all the senses, combining audio with the visual, thinking about other people um, have different access points. So, you know, Don Chorus is one place where, you know, we would welcome proposals that combine, you know, the multiple ways that we experience that site in the wildlife. Exactly. And I think that I'm just kind of jumping off what Leanne and Erwin are saying. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be, you know, the most amazing photographer ever. It's just nice to show people, especially those curious that may not get to the flats, right? There's a lot of people that, you know, they can't access it, especially during these times of COVID. And um, it's nice to show them kind of what goes on, right? And, and bring a little bit of, you know, joy or cheer to someone's day who, you know, might have to be inside, right? So I think it's uh, nice just to showcase whatever goes on and also show our how active our members are, right? Like a lot of our members are out on the flats on the daily. I think, um, Jan, you were saying that, you know, you're there a lot. And I know a lot of you other ones are as well. So yeah, just, just showing that, right? That, that we'd love to to showcase your photos so you've probably seen me liking a lot of your photos and um also Erwin and Brayla and Leanne everyone we're always out there liking and commenting because <laughs> I think we really appreciate it and it's it's nice to see right so yeah now, now I'm just going to backtrack and and contradict myself and because I because <laughs> I also know Pierre Pierre is our guest today and you know I'm also a photographer um you know I've done photography in war zones in terms of photojournalism um, but currently, and, and I'm hardcore on my smartphone, so I'm interested in just getting material, just getting images out on a daily basis, and that's just the way it is with our technology these days. I peripherally, you know, constantly pushing stuff out there. Having said that, personally, I have a challenge. I'm interested in dusk photography. So, because dusk photography, it can be super challenging. It's like, what is being revealed in the darkness? So I'm interested mm -hmm. in you know that so I, I, I do value and, and having Pierre on the on the on the event today is exciting because while I want to promote egalitarianism and participation and participation is really good that doesn't preclude also looking for excellence and and pushing ourselves and so I think there's a I think that those are two separate conversations and I don't want to kind of muddy the water and pretend that they're the same because I think as a photographer Yes, we have our personal goals and our challenges that we want to push ourselves to excellence. And I really encourage all of you to do that and to participate in these calls and pick up tips. But that's a separate conversation from, yeah, let's show the day-to-day -day reality of Maplewood Flat. So welcome both of those conversations. <laughs> yeah, and to riff off a little bit off of what uh, uh, Erwin just said there, one of the things I like to do with my photos is that because I have a long lens and the camera that I have, I can show things that that sort of the common person, if you will, that is not a bird person in particular, may not be aware of in terms of what birds do or look like. Or so, so like for instance, Laurel's photo here of the of the junco does that because not everybody knows they do this when it's cold and snowing, and they don't know that birds necessarily just sit there and then allow the snow to accumulate on them. <laughs> and this photo kind of just embodies that, right? And so I think that when you are going for excellence and something like that's different, then you can see things that you just wouldn't see normally. So I agree with, with Erwin that I think it's good to have an egalitarian approach. And I think it's essential because it gives you diversity of perspectives and so on that you wouldn't have otherwise. But then the people who have the equipment, if they can use that to show things that people wouldn't normally see, then I think that's good too, right? And that can play a conservation role as well. And, so I could talk for hours on that one. But anyways, um, so, so I think both 
they don't contradict each other at all. They could coexist quite nicely, in fact. And I think Maplewood is a, a great place where that happens, in fact, mm -hmm. where that, that those two things are not like at loggerheads, they're actually complementing each other. Yeah, excellent. And you did mention you could go on about photography and conservation and you have and the next issue of Wingspan, which is almost hot off the press. Um, <laughs> you can expect it soon. If you're not a member of Wild Bird Trust, that's one of the benefits. Um, and uh, you can look forward to Pierre's article and a number of other great features and also a lot of photos of birds. So that's another place where we do include photos from our members. Um, uh, and we are we are a provincial uh, magazine now. Um, and so we, we go beyond that. So yeah. Very cool. Um, I know we are kind of rounding off to the end of our time. Um, should we just kind of go through maybe each of the photos one last time? I can yeah. start from the beginning. I'll start from the end because I think I'm closer technically. <laughs> and yeah. And um, Pierre, if you want to jump in when I'm saying them, I think I'll take like 15 seconds per photo. Yep. And then if you just want to jump in, let me know. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yep. we're missing Rob. He's usually here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And Sue is a regular on site too. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, no, but it's good to, it's been really awesome to be able to e-meet you guys, virtually <laughs> meet you. Um, and you'll see, I'm probably following a few of you on um, Instagram and social media because I'm just amazed at um, your guys' talent and, and what you guys capture. So yeah, for me, I wanna say a thank you, but yeah. So we'll start again with uh, Les this beautiful photo. So yeah, I'll just do 15, 15 seconds per photo. Nice. Purple Martins. Yes. Yeah, that's so that's great... actually Barnett Beach. That's that's like a two kilometers away. Yeah. That's crazy. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Oh. Barnett Beach. Yeah. yeah, no, and I love the Purple Mountain Martin house, uh, houses there. That's great. Yeah. And the numbers and it's, it's just yeah. perfect. There's yeah. a really beautiful um, hiking trail that goes from one end of Bernie Mountain all the way to the like um, yep. where the Japanese totem poles are. Yep. And it goes, it's almost like right where the eagle would be, like crossing right above its head. Yep. And um, you can get beautiful um, views of the flats from mm -hmm. there. So I definitely suggest anyone who. Great, eh? That'd be cool to go the other yeah. side. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's a very accessible hike. And now it is quite uh, higher, steep in some areas, but. It's yep. all paved. It's, it's part of the Trans Canada Trail, so it's right. paved and it's gra or not paved. It's gravel, yep. so it's not like a um, mud or, or dirt. So if anyone you know wants to do that, it's it is really nice. So yeah, definitely suggest that. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna next photo. <laughs> this is Rob, and it's too bad that he wasn't able to join us today because yeah, he's yeah. amazing. He really is. And we have the wood duck um, houses on site. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's yeah. been quite a few of them there lately. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. And and yeah, Rob's both of Rob's photos, this and the chickadee. I mean, they're iconic species yeah. at the flats. So it's yeah. great that he included those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and this one, of course. Yeah, that's a great photo. Amazing. Uh, and another iconic species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how they're like kind of like ruffling their feathers or yeah. something. Like <laughs> it's almost like you know flapping their wings and yep. catching them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anise swallowtail. Yeah. yeah this so is funny. just beautiful, and I yep. think that's a lilac or no, maybe not. No, not a lilac. I no. can't remember it right now. It's just this weird kind of weed word or something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. What is it? Butterfly bush, uh, Butterlea. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. No, this and the is bouquet is amazing on this yeah. photo, too. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And there's a research project for the anise swallowtail. Mm. Wow. Is it a species of concern? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not on that. Yeah. But I think the idea is to create habitat to make yeah. sure that it, it can... Mm -hmm. Stay. Yeah, I think they're concerned about it in any event. Yeah, in our upcoming wingspan, there's a small write up on, uh, there's like a pollinator team or project mm -hmm. um, out of the yep. David Suzuki Foundation, and they're yep. doing a lot to 
put in community gardens to help pollinators because yeah it's yeah it's tough right yeah pollinators are in trouble generally mm -hmm, yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. there's andrews amazing yeah. you can really see how fluffy he is yeah. Ready. And I like the fact you see the tag too. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of helps bring that awareness to, you know, black bears in on the North Shore, right? And it's yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Her name black, animals, black animals are hard to photograph. It's hard to get detail, you know, because normally there's too yes. much contrast or, or you know, it's really That's hard right. to get little eyes. So, so this is really nice. He was under yeah. the trees too, and I know you like, you can kind of see it, but there was almost like one ray that hit him, like yeah, yeah. Head it's just back. Thick, yeah. It was like, yep. right there, and it's kind of nailed yeah, it. kind of yeah. On that side. Yeah. yeah well, you you nailed the shot for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Really, really cool. No, thank you, Andrew. Appreciate that. And uh, we had a beautiful talk mm -hmm. from the North Shore Black Bear Society recently. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing another one of those because it's important, right, to create awareness. And if you live in, in the North Shore, really anywhere, you know, that there's black bears, it's it's good to see these photos because when you can see an animal, you can kind of create that relationship a bit more mm -hmm. to understand it. Absolutely. I agree. Thank you. Nice. I, I love I love this one too. This is really cool. This yeah. little I think it's a gray squirrel. Um, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's a I think that's a hawthorn bush. It might be a silver common, brush. Common berry. hawthorn. It's not a native, but it's common hawthorn. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, but I love it. The colors and uh, yeah, just the the shadow of the the berries on the squirrel too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Leanne, you had a little something to share. I was there. I was there when Sue caught these. She was just around the corner from where I was catching these two, but with my camera, and I wasn't. I didn't submit anything. It wasn't like this, but just the little the fawn and the. Um, there were a lot of fawns on site this spring. Mm. It seemed I'm not sure if there was more than usual, but um, yeah, this was just outside the nature house. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And this is nice because they're just, I mean, again, another iconic species at the flats itself. Yeah. And, and, and I've seen them on several occasions on the trail, just like this. Yeah. You know, so it's very cool sort of capturing something that happens yeah. frequently, mm -hmm. but it's well captured, right? So right. no, it's very cool. Yeah. I saw recently a pair of bucks down there locking antlers. They were, wow. there were two bulls behind them and it was just amazing. But that's uh, amazing. What? Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow. someone was yeah. mentioning that too. Huh. Cool. Back to the Junko and mm -hmm. yeah, just I love the wintry scene. I hope it, I mean, I know people have a hard time driving in the snow, but I do hope it snows this year because um, yeah. for the few days we get it, it's kind of nice. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's my favorite time to take pictures. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, yeah definitely. Snow, is, snow is great for pictures. Yeah. Everything looks good in the snow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this orb weaver. Yeah. I love the detail on the. Yeah, the back here looks terrific. That sort of wow. upside down cross there. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Amazing. Well, you can even see the little, I want to say spikes. Yeah. Ears wow. on the legs. That's really amazing. Yeah. Bristles, maybe. The osprey. Yep. That's a great shot. <clears throat> Halloween in the calendar in July because that's when our festival yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, of course. It'll be safely distanced, but yep. <laughs> you have something. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, it's a great shot. I love it. And this one, <laughs> yeah. so cute, just adorable. My, uh, this is kind of a little off basis, but my grandpa used to own the um, barber shop in the. Bayshore Hotel down by Stanley Park mm -hmm. and gotcha. he always said that the otters used to break into the hotel yeah. <laughs> do. they used to break into the hotel and go swimming in the pool oh. <laughs> and they would just be like yeah. <laughs> all in there like the one that took the koi yes that's what I was <laughs> thinking of that too yeah 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 oh my goodness and then he came back the next year yeah <laughs> Yeah, they're smart little guys. <laughs> they are. They are. Right. No, and the Sawa owl. Yep, that's mm -hmm. a great shot. 
really beautiful. I love. I mean, they're all great photos, but yeah. yes, exactly. They are um, all I great love. Photos, so I, I think it's a cedar tree, or at least there's a cedar tree in the background mm -hmm. because you can see, you know, here down here with the little piece of dying um, cedar or something similar mm -hmm. to that, and the the foliage in the background. I don't know, just a plant. Well, for I think it was a little cedar. Yeah. I think it was a little cedar yeah I, I just love it i really love, I, love I think it. out west i think that the sawwets like conifers oh. um oh. i don't know why but yeah that makes sense uh, yeah that's really cool goes with their feathers yep <laughs> jordana came in she was she's a new volunteer and marissa our assistant most recent site manager is helping with some volunteer orientation and she came into the nature house a couple weekends ago and we had some of the photos up and hers was up and she looks over she's like wow that looks like my photo <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't she got the email yet <laughs> and so yeah well that is your photo so <laughs> she was really excited and you can see yep. where that is yep. yeah yeah that's cool, really cool. No, that's mm. beautiful mid-flight and the whole wingspan i was actually hiking on Bernie mountain once and i'm like always talking to myself so I'm like bah, 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 you know and and then all of a sudden i heard something that sounded like a rock like a big rock fall from a tree and i like look over and this huge huge eagle like you know their wingspan is i guess yeah. two meters right yeah and yep. it just, like it got spooked by me because it was probably just taking a break <laughs> and it, <laughs> lying under this tree but it was hitting all these branches on its way out and I was like it kind of spooked me but it was amazing to see just like how huge it was and yeah. so close up in person yeah. and so yeah they are massive they are and the organ grape yeah. <laughs> yeah I I love this plant it's an amazing plant so um medicinal berries Pierre, and Pierre I was asked I was wondering do you, mm -hmm. is this color, is this, I know John's, I don't know if you've seen John's photography. Yep. Um, I was confused if this is color corrected or do you think this is true color? Uh, it could be color corrected, but this, this could be the, the color. I, yeah. as, as someone who knows plants, I think this is yeah. the real color. Like that's what that happens right in August and September is yeah. when we go red. Wild, eh? Yeah. Especially if it's exposed yeah. to a lot of sun. So at most, my guess would be that this might be slightly uh, uh, not oversaturated, but the, the saturation might have been increased on this slightly, but mm -hmm. it wouldn't be by much. Um, yeah. That this is probably the way it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. John, the the, John, is, John is the retired uh, senior deputy deputy of the uh, Slavitoth Treaty Lands and Resources Department. Oh yeah. So nice. he's very very knowledgeable of the local oh, yeah. mm -hmm. lands and waters here at Broad Inlet. Yeah, well, this is a beautiful one, actually, for sure. Very yeah. iconic. Organ grape is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Nice and gem. Mm -hmm. I love this. A little paws, all muddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Intense, intense stare. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I didn't know that coyotes were actually really good swimmers. When I was kind of researching oh, yeah. a little bit about how to post, they're actually really good swimmers. So, but there are no coyotes on Vancouver Island. So, right. Uh, maybe they're not that good at swimmers, but. <laughs> right. Where they yeah. have here. No, it's really cool to see. I love it. Thank oh. you so much, Jen. All right. Rob's chickadee. Yep. So I like cute. the frost on the. Yep on the branch very cool yeah i like that too yeah just stunning yeah yeah and light yeah and the light very light yeah oops sorry guys yeah no it's and you can see the, the feathers yes right? they're really yeah, light no, the detail is really good yeah oh um that reminds me and hopefully erwin and yeah you don't mind but um you know we'd love to bring in um some guest posters you know every once in a while um, for our, um, our social media. So if anyone's interested in, in doing that, like Erwin was saying, you can, you know, kind of propose something and it doesn't have to be too serious, just maybe a three post or something or even one if you'd like. Um, but we're just definitely looking into that. And um, uh, yeah, so if anyone's interested, let me know. You can contact me or anyone else, but yeah. All right, next photo. So, yeah. so animated. Yeah. <laughs> 
And another iconic species, of course, the toeys. Yes, yeah. yeah. Love how you can see it. And they're so loud too. Sometimes you yes. hear them, and you think they're a big animal and you look down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, they live larger than life, huh? <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> I'm a lot noisier than I look. <laughs> oh, nice. I love, yeah, I love this. Really cool shot. The branch looks amazing too. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure what time of day it was, but little looks... little bits of moss there. Yeah. Yeah, lichen. Cool. Yeah, lichen. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Western tanager. Yeah. Amazing bird. And so the cool. colors on this are really great. Mm -hmm. They really are. Yeah. The beak. Yeah. The yarrow. Mm -hmm. Yarrow the beak. Yeah. <laughs> So one of my favorite plants. So um, when I saw this, it was um, Ray said, I think he submitted a few photos and it was hard to choose because I was like really, really loving this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Um, yarrow, the Latin term is Achillea millifolium. And oh, I'm yeah. probably pronouncing that a little bit wrong, but um, Achillea refers to Achilles or like Achilles heel, kind of, you know, if mm -hmm. you ever heard that. Um, because he used that to um, treat uh, wounded soldiers. Um, right. And I think that's really cool. Um, and because it's a great um, plant um, and medicine to stop a bleeding. Um, and it's even good for uh, women um, during your uh, moon time. So I think mm -hmm. that's amazing. And um, then the millifolium means yep. um, a thousand uh, leaves. So yep. if you see there, they're one leaf right here. It's made up of a ton of teeny tiny little leaves. Yeah. So um, that's how you can really identify yarrow if you're out in the wild and you're unsure. Um, that's a great one to look at the leaves because um, that can help you. Mm -hmm. All right, a little bee. <laughs> and here's our last one, the looper moth. <laughs> really cool. Yeah, love that. And the little teeny hairs. Did anyone have any ones that got into their house? Because I had a ton. <laughs> so every time I opened the door. <laughs> exactly. My dogs were terrified of them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We live in south, uh, south, uh, southeast corner of Vancouver, and there weren't that many. So yeah. I do hear. I hear the North Shore was especially hit by them, mm -hmm. um, and then spots closer to them but we didn't have as many here we, we saw them I mean yeah. there was they were around um, but not as badly as that mm -hmm. there were so pretty... many different types of moths too it, it, it there yeah. was brown moths and then I, I don't know what they're called but they were they were beautiful I've never seen those type of striations and the dots and the patterns on, mm -hmm. on so many of these mm -hmm. that I, I was blown out of the water with with the moths <laughs> Wow. They're very cool. Yeah. yeah. No, they were. They're really, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them, but like they were <laughs> kind of wild to see. Like um, anytime, like I would like look out at the streetlight by my house, always just like, it literally looked like it was snowing because there was that many um, just kind of going towards the light. But um, I'll just kind of give one last fact. I know I'm a big talker, but um, uh, my mom was saying that uh, actually, with lights um it, it actually is like um it are like the moths always uh, i guess fly towards the moon or they used to um because they're attracted to light so they always used to fly towards the moon so you never had them actually too low to the ground but with the you know the introduction okay. of um electric lighting um in our houses and our streets and everywhere it's actually kind of making the moss come lower down and, and fly closer to humans. So I, I don't know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Laurel has reminded us it's the hemlock looper moths and hemlock the, looper moths, the yeah. quote unquote mournful thorn. Uh -huh. Ooh, oh, there's some poetry. Uh, yes, yeah. poetic <laughs> name. <laughs> mournful thorn? thorn? Yes. Ooh, okay, interesting, mm. I like that. <laughs> Oh, nice. Well, yeah, that's the end of our photos. Um, yeah. I thank everyone for being here. I thank you, Pierre, so much for your, your knowledge, your wisdom that you've shared with us. I thank all of the photographers who were able to join us. 
um, and share your amazing photography because it is so meaningful for us to be able to share this, especially in times where, you know, not all of us are able to get out and be together. Um, and I thank Leanne and Erwin also for being here too and, and guiding this talk in many ways. And yeah, I just, uh, huge thanks to everyone. And um, we hope to keep you guys updated on how the um, you know installing of the show is going. We wanna make sure that we are being as safe as possible um, with each other, right? And respecting that, um, but we're definitely interested in, in getting it up soon so that you guys can hopefully maybe book a time to come see where it's safe and, um, and come enjoy your photography in real life because it is, it's, it's just as stunning as it is on the computer. It's even more so in, in person, so yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna thank everyone. Thanks, Pierre. Thanks, Pierre. Thanks. Thank you, Pierre. Good to see you. You're welcome. Yeah, Great you meeting so you all. Jumped in again there again for the first time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, guys, have a great day. Okay. Bye, all. Okay. Bye. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye, Janine. Good to meet you. Okay, I don't know how I stop live on Facebook.